Hey everyone, Teddy here. Today I'm going to show you guys how I went from seeing this design on Twitter to a production ready component in under 10 minutes. Let's get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into Magic Patterns here. Just as a reminder, Magic Patterns is an AI design tool that helps you design and build front end applications. So when I find a design online that I want to copy, usually the first thing I'll do is just take a basic screenshot. And then I'll go ahead and paste that into Magic Patterns. This is usually a really good way to start off the design because it'll help put in the basic frameworks and overall component that we're going for. Again, we're not going to nail it the first try, but we just want to, you know, put in the right pieces so we can iterate on it. So let's just go ahead and just put in the image and no prompt needed. When you don't include a prompt, Magic Patterns will default to just recreating that image, which is exactly what we want to do here. So no prompt was needed. All right, cool. So this is what we got back. Not quite what we were going for, but you know, it's a good starting point. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put in an image in the background here. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on with this button because the background is just black, right? We can't tell if this is see-through, we can't tell if it's you know slightly transparent or not. So let me go ahead and find an image online similar to this and insert that. I just Googled a plant image with a black background. This is what I got. Um, kind of just going for the same vibe as what the video was. And all I needed to do now is just tell it, replace the background with this image. And what Magic Patterns will do is it'll take the image and hopefully use it as the background. All right, perfect. Um, it's quite vibrant, but you know, that's okay. I'll do the job. As you can see, it's a little bit easier to tell now that, hey, this button is actually a little bit transparent, just like we wanted to. Here's that reference image again. A cool little trick that I like using a lot of times when I'm recreating something is actually just taking that original screenshot, copying it and repasting it in and asking it to recreate this component once again. And the reason it, you can almost think of it as like a loop of telling the AI like, hey, like make it look more like this, make it look more like this. Each try will get a little bit better, but of course you'll hit a point where you get diminishing returns. So this only works so many times. So as you can see here, uh, that did actually a pretty decent job of getting it closer. Something that's kind of annoying me is that it's really small right now. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Great, it's a little bit bigger now. It's still got that nice hover effect, which honestly is really close to the original. Let's take a look again at the original design. I'm seeing that this sync your broker is actually a separate like little bubble aside from the normal button. Not sure I love that design decision, but you know, in the spirit of just recreating something, let's go ahead and make that happen. All right, not too shabby. Um, it's looking pretty good. I think the sync with broker is a little bit darker than what it should be. So I'm actually gonna do the same exact trick here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this reference image in once again. Um, and tell it that the sync, the sync your broker button should be lighter in tone. Maybe it should have a bit of a gray gradient to help make it stand out against the background. It's still a little bit darker than I think the reference image really has it, but honestly, it's kind of better this way in my opinion. I'm not really sure why there is a pill inside of this button. Something I would love to improve a little bit further is just making this bigger once again. So let's tell it to make it bigger. Okay, great. It's made it bigger once again. It's looking pretty good. I really like this hover effect. I think it looks really nice. So the last big thing that I want to tweak in terms of layout is just increase that spacing between the icons and the sync your broker. You'll see in the reference design, it's a little bit bigger. So let me go ahead and make that change real quick. Fantastic, it's looking great. Uh, the two last big changes I want to make is you'll see in this reference image, there's this white border slash shadow against the back that um, I'm not really sure what exactly it is, but I do like that it adds a little bit of contrast slash like texture to the design almost. So I want to add that. And then the last small detail I'm going to try to fine tune is you'll see that these icons, they actually start fading out the further back they get. It's a super small, subtle detail that, you know, I don't really blame the AI for not picking up on because, you know, probably most of us would never even notice this, but I do think it adds a nice degree of, of, of taste, you know, to, to the design. So I'm gonna go ahead and tweak those two things. I'll be right back um, and I'll show you guys the prompt once I get there. All right, so after two prompts here, um, I can show you guys right here. Uh, I added this prompt right here, basically just explaining like, hey, like as the icons get further back, make them more faded, 
but I also specified that they should not they should be fully opaque in that like they shouldn't be transparent that's how I got this effect here and this is the second prompt that I sent to basically add that whitish drop shadow it's not as like apparent as it is in this image but I actually think that's largely because of the background image of the blur effect honestly it stands out enough for me that I'm quite happy with this component so the last thing, if you really wanted to tweak it is, you know, you could put in those company icons into here. I think that would really take it to the next level. So now that I'm quite happy with how this component turned out, I'm going to go ahead and hop in the code and just copy and paste this and boom, next thing you know, I have my component ready to go. And this is all react code that you can literally just copy and paste and use inside your project. I can also export to Figma or sync it to GitHub if I wanted to. Um, but generally from here, I'll go ahead and copy the code and use that inside of my project. Of course, it's not perfect and there's some more tweaks we can make, but I'm really happy with how this looks. I really like this fade glass morphic look to it. If you guys want to make tweaks yourself, I'll leave a link to this component down below. You guys can fork it, make your own updates. But that's going to do it from this video. I'm excited to see what you guys create using this method. One of the biggest unlocks for me as a design engineer is being able to take any design from the internet and make it into my own.